All right, one last topic for now. Communication. Creating opportunities for communication. So a lot of times in the home it can be difficult to target communication because the environment in a home is set up very different from school. At school, all the things that kids like are put away. And the only way to access those things is to ask for them. At home, most everything is out and available and for free. So part of what I told you in the video about reinforcement was that you really need to assess what you have at home and what your kids like and all that stuff that's out there for free right now, you need to take control of it. And it's no longer for free and you are now the vehicle with which your child can come in contact with these things. Um, so instead of them freely accessing whatever they want all the time, no, 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 no. If you want this thing, which you can absolutely have, I want you to have this thing, but to have it, you need to do X, Y, and Z for me. That's what we call a contingency. Um, the other way that you can use items that are preferred items is to elicit communication. So... You also need to be in control of those things that your child likes. Um, that might mean putting locks on cabinets. That might mean putting a lock on your refrigerator for a day. That might mean um, putting food in the refrigerator or the freezer into containers that your child doesn't know how to open. So there's lots of things that you can do to elicit communication. Um, most of it involves booby trapping things. So I was just giving you some ideas of booby traps. Locking a refrigerator, get a chain and, and put a lock on it. Your kid is going to have to come ask you for help. Tighten the containers, tighten the tops on anything. Put things on top shelves where your kids can't get to it. Um, put things in, in top cabinets where your kids can't get to it. These are just some ways. You can put things into boxes and put them in your room and maybe your room is locked and it's off limits. You can sabotage by, um, let's say your child is playing with uh, a puzzle and they really enjoy completing a puzzle and a piece missing would really irk them. Take a piece of the puzzle out. Create an opportunity for them to request for puzzle. Um, maybe your kiddo loves baby dolls. You, um, they would have to care. Like, let's say they love baby dolls, but they like for their baby dolls not to have clothes on. Put clothes on them and put them on and, like, tape them on the baby so it's not easy to get off. They will request for you to take the clothes off. Um, trying to think of other ways you could booby trap a baby. Um, if it has batteries and they like for it to make a crying noise, you could take the batteries out. If they don't like it when it cries, then turn it on and make it so they can't turn it off until they ask you. I do all kinds of crazy things. So um, you can spill stuff on your child intentionally to set up an opportunity for them to request to change any part of their clothes. It's a great way to work on vocab. So maybe you accidentally spill something on their shirt and they have to request to change their shirt which you could already have it set up once they get into the room there are no shirts there so then they have to ask and you could have multiple shirts so that they can request which color plus shirt they want or maybe which Disney princess plus shirt they want um, you can do it with their pants you can do it with underwear you can do it with socks you can do it with shoes um, it sounds mean, but it's not mean. It's actually a very clever way for you to expand their language. Um, and so, and the more creative you can be with it, the better. So you can do things like do an art project with your kiddo. And if they're very motivated, motivation is key now. If they're not motivated and you set some of these up, then they're going to be like, eh, whatever. I don't care. To finish the project so whatever obstacles you've created for me I'm not gonna request to have them solved because I don't have motivation um, but you could invite them to the table if they're super motivated to be sitting down and working with you maybe all the chairs are gone and they have to request for you to get them a chair 
because you've hidden them somewhere. Um, maybe you're working on glitter and glue and you give them an empty glue bottle or you give them a glue bottle that's been glued shut so they have to ask you for help or for glue or for open. Um, you can do that with any art materials. I save things so I have like a I have a glue bottle that I save that's empty. I have a glue stick I save that's empty. I have a broken paintbrush that I save. I have an empty watercolor set. I have, um, uh, what was the other one? Paint that's empty. So they ask for paint, I give it to them. There's nothing in there. So they have to ask for a different paint or for help or for open. Um, markers, dried out markers, I save those. You can glue a marker shut and give it to your kiddo. You can be really creative with this. And as you start doing more structured activities with your kiddos and they're getting into it, it, it will give you kind of um, the context with which to think about how to create these lessons. So if you're doing art every day, you could start thinking about how to create the communication opportunities. And you don't have to just booby trap things. You can have multiple options of things when you're doing these lessons. So they can tell you what kind of paint they want. Maybe you have sparkly paint, maybe you have regular paint, maybe you have finger paint, maybe you have paint you use a paintbrush with. So options also create an opportunity for them to request. So if there's, you know, maybe it's dinner time and your kiddo is allowed to drink a Coke and they normally request a Coke, um, you could have a two liter Coke and you could have a little teeny tiny Coke um, and set up a lesson where they have to request the big Coke or the little Coke. Um, options and, and different amounts or different variations of the same thing also create communi communication opportunities and creates a reason for your child to use an attribute. So if there's a big Coke and a little Coke, Maybe the big Coke is empty and the little Coke is full. So you've created a reason for them to specify which size Coke they want because there's two of them there. So you've got to specify. And then you further set it up so that they're going to be requesting the little Coke because it's the only one that has what they want in it. If that makes sense. Um, so having options, having options within one kind of thing. So lots of different kinds of paint like the example I gave you with the big and the little Coke. Um, or you could have lots of different sodas. If your kid likes more than one kind of soda, they could tell you that. Um, they might like to do different types of things with one object. So then you would get verb requests. Maybe they like to play with water and they want to splash in the water and they want to pour with the water and they want to add more water or they want hot water, they want cold water. All of those would be really cool lessons that you could do around that. The thing about requesting is that you want to look at what does your kid say every day? Because that stuff's not cool. That's old news. Like, I'm, I'm glad they're saying these things. That's great that they have that skill. But that's what we call maintenance skills. Um, and it's old news. It really shouldn't get a lot of reinforcement because you've been doing it forever. What we want to do is push to the next level. So look at their current requests, their current level of language with you, and then how could you bump it up to the next level? Um, and you can have a lot of fun, I, I do, um, booby trapping things to set up communication opportunities. You can lock doors that you know they're going to try and go in and out so they excuse me, have to ask for help or ask for the key or ask to go in, ask to come out. I'll do crazy things. I'll take, um, we do planning sheets at school for um, communication opportunities. And one of the ones that I had planned out the other day was booby trapping the toilet. So taking um, a, a container and filling it with my workout weights there at work. So I've got these a heavy set of weights that are there and putting it inside the bin and then putting it on top of the toilet. So when they went to go use the bathroom, they couldn't lift the container off of the toilet. So they had to come request for help or take off. Um, lots of different communications would have been appropriate for that. Um, you can go to your fuse box and turn off um, 
power to anything in the room that they might be really into. It could be the lights, it could be the microwave, it could be the TV. Uh, you can turn your Wi-Fi off and make them request for that. You can, um, I'm trying to think of other really good ones. You can turn off the water under the sink, those little knobs that you can turn so they go to wash their hands and no water comes out. Now again, remember that they have to have motivation to complete whatever task that you are booby trapping. So you can set up motivation. Oh, your last token is for washing your hands in the bathroom. We finished painting. We need to go wash our hands or wash the paintbrushes so you can get your last token to go play Kindle. So you head to the bathroom and you've turned the water off. They want their last token to get the thing they're earning. They can't wash whatever they're supposed to be washing because ah, obstacle, the water's cut off. So then they need to communicate with you about that. So um, you might have some fun thinking about this. Maybe this is overwhelming. Um, having multiple things of one type can be helpful. We talked about with the big and the little coke. We talked about paint. Um, stickers is a good one if you've got a kiddo into stickers. It's very easy to go to the dollar store and get lots of different kinds of stickers. They can ask for the butterfly sticker. They can ask for the purple sparkly butterfly sticker versus the pink non-sparkly sticker. So look for within a, a category whenever you're at a store um, a particular category where you can get lots of different variations within it. Stickers is a really, a really good one. Maybe they want five stickers. Maybe they want to put stickers at the top of their paper. Maybe they want all of the stickers on their paper. Maybe they want the circle sticker. Maybe they want the square sticker. Maybe they want two circle stickers and one square sticker. All of these different things elicit communication. Play dumb. If they come to you and they say something and they're not saying a lot, go, huh? What? I don't get it. See if they'll say more. You know, if your kiddo already knows how to say help, See if they'll say help open if you're like, help, help with what? They hand you a container and you do something with it other than the obvious thing that needs to be done to get help with it. Maybe they bring you something and they want it open and they just hand it to you. Just stare at them. Then they say help. Okay, well, uh, help how? You could like, am I helping you? Oh, I'm trying to, I'm messing with the Coke. I'm flipping it upside down. Does this help you? Stand there and wait. See if they'll give you a verb with it. Um, a lot of times it feels uncomfortable as a parent because you spent many, many years filling in the gaps of your child's communication. You were their expert. You figured out the different sounds they made, the gestures. You figured out all the clues to what they wanted without them having the communication skills to tell you. And it was a very beautiful thing you did as a parent when they were at a level where they couldn't really communicate their wants and needs in a more clear way. You took it upon yourself to learn all of their little things so that you knew and could give them what they were wanting. Um, so now in these later years of getting intervention, you, you want to put the burden back on them of communication now that they're learning those skills. So don't ask a lot of questions and don't put words in their mouth. Sit back and wait. Create motivation and then wait for them to really make an attempt. And if you know, you've waited a while and they can't, that's when you prompt the skill and then you'll recreate that same situation again to try and get it independent the next time. So reach out to me with questions, every kid's level of communication, what to expect, how many words, is it vocal, is it with a device, all that stuff is different per kid. Um, but hopefully this just kind of gives you an idea of some steps you can take to start working on the communication at home. If your child has a set of routines that they expect out of you, don't do them. If they eat chicken nuggets at 4 o'clock every day, hide the chicken nuggets and at 4 o'clock just stare at them. Let's see what happens. See if they come and say, I want chicken nuggets. Okay, go get them. Wait for them to go look for them. Wait for them to ask, where are the chicken nuggets? Um, you know, if every time you get in the car there's a specific toy they want, don't have that toy in the car. See what happens. Which also brings me to accepting no. Um, but we'll talk about that in a separate topic. Um, you can lock their door. Lock lock um, the door and tell them to get in the car. Put the car lock on and tell them to get out of the car. 
jank the seatbelt so that they can't put it on, mess up um, the seat so it's all folded up and they can't sit down when it's time. Think about all of their routines where they expect something out of you because you're not probably aware that your child has created rituals in you based on what they want. And I bet if you sat down and brainstormed it, you could tell me three things that you do in a particular way every day at a particular time with a particular thing because that's what your child has taught you to do. Um, take all of those routines and then just stop doing the things and, and wait for them to communicate about them. Later, I'm going to be asking you not just to stop doing those things and wait for them to ask for them, but once they're asking for all of them, then you're going to start being like, nope. Some of the time, so that we can start breaking those too. Um, but that's another really great place to create communication opportunities. All those things that your kids expect out of you without communicating it, stop doing them.